Hey guys, I want to talk about something. Yeah, you know, I've mentioned it before in a video when too much, too much, but I have it. I know a lot of you guys have it, and we don't realize it. It's the prepper curse that I call it. Hold on, this winds. Let me get over here to the truck. You know, I was having bad times, marriage problems, you know, and, and uh, I thought I was going to have to move, you know. We're just going to separate and stuff, but things worked out. But I, I was looking at my preps, and I'm thinking, it's going to take two or three truckloads just to move that stuff. And I'm, I'm like, then I started thinking, you know, if I could stay in one spot, it would be good. If I could defend this area or wherever I'm at, me and the, you know we would be we would be set but you know if we had to leave if martial law was imposed you know there's a lot of things i mean that's a lot of supplies going to be wasted lost so i started thinking you know you're going to need water and you're going to need a way to Purify water. You're going to need food. You're going to need ways of getting food. You're going to need a few hand tools like hammers and shovels and saws. Um, shelter, tarps, tents, nails, ropes, you know, to build a good shelter. Um, protection knives you know you can go through if you had to bug out there's no way carry it. i can load this truck slap full if something was to happen but i'm painting a big target on me you know going down the road if i if the roads are congested or anything like that people's going to know i have food in there and you're going to get mobbed on a highway or an interstate just due to the the prepper curse you know we need more we need more we need more we need more but how much do we really need granted if you're on a homestead and you can defend it and you've got people to defend and and yeah you're going to need all of that but if you're in the big city if you're in the suburbs you know, I live out in the country, but this is wide open. You know, I'll be able to defend for a little while, but not prolong. So I would have to leave the area. And that's, I, it just got me thinking, because when I thought I would have to move all this stuff, and I'm thinking, my God, it, it's, it's ungodly of what I got in there. And, you know, and I sold a lot of stuff because of the problems I was having at the time. But, you know, I'm breaking, I'm, I'm, I'm starting to realize in a SHTF situation, I say 90%, you're gonna have to leave your area. You're gonna have to either under one circumstances or another and you're not going to be able to take all your food and all your water all, everything you've had set back you know you're going to need a medical kit i use the backpack and all i got to do is grab that that's got sutures that's got antibiotics that's got everything i need for any minor cuts injuries sickness you know, to, to get through. If I get cut, boys get cut, we can sew it uh, up. We've got antibiotics, we got we got everything in that backpack. You know, our water, you're gonna need water containers. But I got one, I think it's a five gallon, blue five gallon water jug. We could fill that up before we leave. And every one of us has a, either a life straw or a mini Sawyer Mini. And those Sawyer Minis, I think it said 100,000 gallons 
of water it does so we've got the water you know um, food we can carry as much food as we can but I have means of trapping fishing hunting to pro get other foods um, we got books on wild edibles around this area seeds to plant and grow uh, it, it's just I'm not saying you you just need a backpack full of stuff and to go out no you need more than a backpack full of stuff you're gonna need you're gonna need a lot of stuff but like me there's five of us in the family each one can carry so much plus the wagon plus the the cart plus you know we will have enough to get by for a while if we had to bug out sorry there's crazy dogs in here running around but, but like i said it just got me thinking go to go do me a favor go to your preps and look say how much could you actually carry how much do you actually need if you had to bug out? What is the necessities? What's top priority? Shelter, fire, food, water, medical, protection. You know, and like your water, do you have a way to carry water? Do you have a way to purify water? Do you have a way to boil water? Food, do you have a way, other means like trapping, hunting, fishing, seeds to get you food when your food stock runs out. You know, medical, do you have every, all the minor stuff covered? I mean, if you, if you get shot, you know, if you get like chicken pox or measles or something like that, you know, in a SHTF situation, um, something major, Unless there, you've got a doctor with all the, the medical supplies and medical tools and operating room, and you're, most people are going to die if they get a major injury or sickness in a SHTF situation. But like I said, it just got me thinking that prepper curse. You know, we watch videos, we read books, we watch... TV programs, especially that Doomsday Prepper. You know, at first I used to watch that, and then it got kind of it got stupid. But it just you just you just okay. I need this, and I need that. I need this, and I need this, and I need that. And I need this, and I need this. Yeah, I wished I had a place where I could set back two or three years of food and water and everything I need and I know my boys will be okay you know I, I know I wouldn't be able to lose it or get burned up or tornado come through and tear it up or martial law come you know they come in and they take it because I'm not dying for a bunch of food and you know prepping items you know when the military shows up you're going to be outgunned, and I'm not going to put my boy's life in risk, and I'm not going to put mine in risk. You know, if it comes down to it, I'm just going to grab what I can, and me and the, me and the family's going to haul butt, and they can have whatever they want. But a lot of people don't see it that way. They think they're going to die for their preps. Well, if you die, they're going to still come in, walk over your body, walk over your family's body, and take what they want. So... They're winning no matter what. That's off subject. But just go to your preps and actually sit down and think, if you had to leave your home no matter what, how much could you take? Then start prioritizing. Okay, this backpack or this few buckets of this of water or, or food or medical or ammo or you know soap and shampoo and you know those necessities and just break it down where you could be able to put it in the trunk of your car 
a, a garden wagon, a, a deer hauler cart, you know, something that you and your family could carry easily and have enough supplies to last you until you get to a safe spot or till you find you a spot where you the water's plentiful, the game's plentiful, you feel safe in that area. Or you get with other people that you feel safe with and you guys build a community together. Uh, you know, it's just... Just look at the old mountain men, you know, what they carried. Look at the pioneers. They didn't... They had a lot, but they didn't really have a lot. A majority of what was in their wagons was like trunks and a wood stove and a piano, you know, and, and heavy blankets. They wasn't... It was a lot of bulk items. It wasn't a lot of items we have today. You know, they carried a lot of coffee and sugar and flour and cornmeal and salted meat to get them by. But they hunted. They fished. But just go and see if you guys are like me that have the prepper curse. Because I admit it, I, I had the prepper curse bad. But now my eyes are open. You know, I am... I am prioritizing. Granted, I'm going to keep enough in here in case something does happen. You know, I can last a few months, need be. But other than that, you know, if we have to bug out, we're going to be able to carry what we need. And that's going to thrive as we're surviving. You know, we're going to thrive on what we have as we're surviving. You know, we're not going to be struggling and if you prioritize it right sorry and you pack it right and you load it right you can get a lot of stuff in your whatever your cart your your trunk of your car your truck your camper whatever you know as long as you got a water filter where you can filter your water you know you don't have to carry you don't have to have a hundred 12 pack bottles of water you can have a canteen on you and your water you know your your water your your life straw or your saw your mini you know to keep and have everybody in your your family or your group have one or two of those because in case something happens to one they break down you're not relying on just one you'll have several like we've got like three or four Sawyer minis and each of the boys have a life straw you know make sure you have ways to start fires with lighters matches ferro rods magnesium strips have multiple they're little you could pack them up in you know bags and buckets or whatever but uh, I hope this video made sense um, do you guys have the prepper curse I did and um, I, I'm breaking it because there's just no sense in it it's just taking up so much room and time and money you know I spend money that money on other things you know I can me personally I won't need a lot to survive on and me and the, me and the family will survive comfortably you know but a lot of people thinks they need a tractor trailer load of stuff in order to survive if you got the common sense if you got the skills and you got what you need you can survive almost anywhere comfortably you just got to have the fortitude to do it the knowledge the will the determination so tell me what you guys think and um, I'll see you on the next one Bye for now, guys.